Hey guys, this is Kelsey from Sweet Bar Farm. We're really excited to share this with you. Today we get to bring home one last Nigerian dwarf doling. This is Casey. She's a yearling Nigerian dwarf um, from our mentor Holly's farm. And uh, she's the last doe left on Holly's farm. We, we waited until the other doe went with her home this afternoon. So Casey here is a cousin to our Phyllis and Lacey J, who we brought home from Holly's farm last week, is her aunt. So I'm gonna carry her back to the barn and we'll let her meet her aunt and the rest of the little goats. Come on, Casey. Guys, um, we just brought home Casey to join our herd today, and I thought this would be a great moment to talk to you guys about horns. Um, and you've noticed probably that none of our goats have horns, and this is one of the main reasons why. <laughs> uh, so horns are um, common on cattle and their relatives. You also find them on goats and sheep. And horns are usually found on both males and females of this species, and these are permanent structures. So if any of you are deer hunters, um, you know, deer have antlers which are different. Uh, those are normally only on the males, and they lose them and regrow them each year. Um, so horns are different, and uh, how we manage them um, is dependent on those differences. So. Since they're permanent structures, and they can be found on goats of both sexes, uh, two ways to manage them, well, I guess the first way to manage them is to breed for animals that don't have horns. So Casey here is polled. That means she has an allele for having no horns. She will never grow horns. She wasn't disbudded or dehorned. She was born and the top of her head looked just like it does today. Um, Margo, the feigning goat in the middle back there, she's also pulled. And that's a dominant trait. So they only need one copy of the pulled allele to have this phenotype where they never grow horns. So that's one way that we're managing horns on our farm is we're breeding our goats and our cattle to be pulled. So we don't have to disbud or dehorn them. An important thing to keep in mind with dairy goats, they have a unique um, linkage where if you breed two pulled goats together, you run the risk of getting pseudo-hermaphrodite goats. So that's a, a goat that ends up with testes, but it also has a vulva. So these pseudo-hermaphrodite goats are usually not um, fertile, they can't have offspring, and if you're breeding for dairy goats, that's definitely not something you want. Um, and that's something unique to dairy goats. Meat goats don't have that problem, cattle don't have that problem. So since we have Casey here is pulled, when we bring home our new buckling this spring, one of the important traits we'll be looking for is that that buckling is horned. So if he's born with horn buds, that means that we can breed him to Casey and we don't have to worry about pseudohermaphrodites. The it's a dominant trait, but a horned buck and a pulled doe can still have a horned offspring, right? Well, yeah, that depends on the genotype. So I'm assuming Casey's heterozygous, which means she's got one horned allele and one pulled allele. And since pulled is dominant, that's what we see when we look at her. So when we breed her to a horned buck, I expect that half her kids will be born pulled like her, and the other half will be born horned. 
So uh, if you have goats that are born horned, so genetically horned, they're going to grow horns. What um, we have done, and I think what's most common in the goat world and also with cattle, is we just bud them. So when they're very young, like maybe two weeks old, um, we use uh, a hot iron to burn off the horn buds and they pop right out. And you also need to burn a layer of hair around the horn buds to prevent any horn regrowth. And can't really see the scar. I think a hair's grown back over it. So this is one of the fainting goats that would have had them. You know, most recently been dehorned or disbudded. Disbudded. So that would have been done at the end of December. So it did scar, but they're pretty much the hair's growing in the back, so. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about So that. when they disbud with a hot iron, you take this hot iron and you you heat up the horn bud and then it pops out. Um, and you need to singe off an area of hair around the horn buds so that they don't have scurs that grow in. Scurs are different from horns. So horns have a bony core that's vasculized, so they have blood flow to their horns. And on the outside of the horn, there's a sheath of keratin, just like your fingernails are made of. Now Karen here, she was disbudded with a hot iron, but the the breeder missed a little bit of the edge of the horn bud, and so she's growing what's called a scur. It's just the keratin sheath on the outside. There's no blood flow to it, and I trim it just like a toenail. I use a pair of side clippers, and I trim it every now and then when it starts to get too long like it is now. She but She won't sit still. <laughs> she won't sit still. Scurs you can trim like toenails because they don't have blood flow to them. But you can't do that to a horn, you'll have a horrible bloody mess on your hands. There is another way to disbud that we haven't used here, but I know a lot of people do it. They use an acid paste to disbud. So when the calves or the kids are very young, before the horns begin to grow, you can apply an acid paste to the horn buds and the, the acid will kill the tissue in the horn bud. So ideally, you wouldn't have any horns grow. Um, but I think that method is, I would argue it's less effective than using the hot iron, but also it's a little bit riskier. So um, using the hot iron, as long as the person who's doing it knows what they're doing, the risk of complications is extremely low. Um, well, that can burn holes in their ears and stuff too. Yes, the acid, however, can drip onto their ears or run down into their eyes. And um, when the calves or kids go to nurse on their mothers, they can rub on the, from the top of their head onto the udders and cause a lot of other problems. So that's a route we have chosen not to take here. We favor the disbudding iron. Our vet disbudded Buddy, our calf, for us this spring. And it was amazing how fast he did it. He has a butane disbudding iron that gets really hot. And I think it was about five seconds on each side and he was done. No anesthetic needed. And he was up and ready to go back to mom, no problem. If you have an animal that is horned and you don't disbud them when they're young, you miss that window. So for kids, I think they try to do it around two weeks. For calves, I've seen people recommend doing it anywhere from a week to two months old. But if you wait too long and the horns have begun to grow, um, there are some other options, but it's a lot larger intervention and a riskier procedure. Um, so some people use, uh, you, you have to remove them surgically. So that's something you'd have to have a vet's help for or um, you can use a special, like a wire saw to cut the tips off the horns, like Killian, our old bull, someone had done that to his horns and removed the tips so they're not sharp. Um, on our farm, all our, anim all our cattle have been, they're either born pulled or have been disbudded, um, except for Greta. We, we bought Greta and when we went to pick her up, I, I had thought that she'd been disbudded, but she hadn't been. And by the time we got her home, our vet said her, 
Her horns had grown too large to use the disc budding iron on, so Greta gets to keep her horns, but she's the only one. So uh, some reasons that you want to, we want to keep horns off our farm is mostly to prevent injury to the animals and to us. Um, I've heard lots of horror stories of goats getting their horns stuck in a fence or a gate, um, and that can be lethal. Uh, lots of times you hear about goats getting in fights with one another and injuring or goring each other with their horns, which you'll see especially now that we have a new goat today, they're working on the dominance hierarchy. There's going to be a lot of sparring for the next couple of days while they sort that out. Um, so without the horns, it's more of a, a harmless exercise um, or something they need to do. But with horns, that would be riskier. And we did have, if you guys look back at some of our older videos, we had Shetland sheep in 2020. And our Shetland ram um, was heterozygous for polled. So he had horns, but they weren't really big, th strong, thick horns. And we had gone, I don't know, to the grocery store. We were only gone somewhere for a couple hours, and we came home, and it looked like a crime scene in the sheep shed. There was blood smeared everywhere, and it was oozing all over the place, and it was really an R-rated scene. Um, and so, you know, we patched him up and treated him with blood stop powder, and he ended up being just fine, but it's an incredibly painful injury uh, to have that bony core of the horn exposed like it was so I think that was a learning experience for us we decided we we didn't want to mess around with horns with any of our other animals all right so why do goats and cattle have horns in the first place um, they use them primarily when I uh, fighting with other animals of the same species or defending themselves against predators and horns also, since they're highly vascularized, they also work um, as a cooling system when the animals are under heat stress. So if they're doing a lot of hard physical activity or if you live in a place that's very hot, then having horns on your animals can be a real benefit. I know um, like angora goats that grow um, the cashmere mohair fibers, they always leave the horns on angora goats because it's really important for regulating their temperature. Um, and pack goats, if you've got goats are using as pack animals, they need to keep their horns as well for the same reason. So when they're working hard, they can cool themselves off. Now, our animals, where we live in northern Michigan, <coughs> heat stress isn't really a problem, and it's something that we can easily modulate for our animals. And predators aren't really a problem where we live either. I should knock on wood. But we, um, we do have coyotes around, but we have multiple layers of fencing and electric wire to protect our animals. Uh, so they don't really need their horns to protect them. And I don't think horns would be enough Get down if there were a predator anyways for the goats. Who knocked over the eggs? Was it you, Holly Wally? Or was it you, Lacey? Or was it Casey? Do it again. So what's the difference between an antler and a horn? So an antler grows from a structure on the skull called a pedicle, and it grows throughout the breeding season, and then when breeding season's over, they lose their horns, or their antlers. And the antlers are something you find in cervids, so deer, elk, um, caribou, moose, and they are only generally found on the males, with the exception of reindeer. And the antler's bone, right? Yes, it's bone, and then the velvet on the outside is a really thin layer of epidermis, like skin with hair, um, that's vascularized and feeds it as it grows. Whereas a horn is what? A horn is a permanent structure. It's got a bony core, which is vascularized, so it's got a blood supply within the horn. And then the outside, the sheath of the horn, is keratin, like your fingernails. And keratin is the same as their hooves, right? Yes, yup, hooves are also keratin, and hair is also made from keratin. Right. Complain about the weather.
Um, I don't know about you guys, but we are really eager for spring to get here. It's been super cold and windy with very little snow. It's just been kind of a miserable winter. So we are definitely ready for some, some sunshine. Our goats are divas, so they, they don't really like to go out in the snow. <laughs> So I think they're ready for spring too. And it's been so cold that even though we heat with our outdoor wood burner, our house is old and not well insulated. Our furnace basically runs nonstop. The wood burner keeps up, but what has our electric bill been like $450 a month? Yeah. So we need a break from the cold, but I don't think it's coming because this week we're supposed to get some snowstorms. Well, snow would be nice, but not the cold. What do you think, Maylee? Ready for spring? <laughs> if you're interested in other goat care topics like biosecurity and disease testing, click here.